you, um, Madam Acting Deputy President. I rise uh, to speak in favour of uh, the government's Crimes Legislation Amendment Police Powers at Airports Bill. Um, this uh, bill um, will enhance uh, police powers at Australian airports by, uh, by enabling uh, police constables and indeed um, protective services officers in appropriate circumstances to direct a person, a person of interest, to produce evidence of their identity, uh, to facilitate an identity check or to direct a person to leave the premises or not to take a flight. The overarching priority of this Morrison Liberal government is to keep Australians safe and secure. Um, and this government is absolutely committed to ensuring that our police services can continue to protect Australians. And of course, aviation is an enduring and attractive target for terrorism and organised crime. And the disrupted terrorist attack uh, on the Sydney airport in July 2017 both demonstrated this uh, and demonstrated a level of um, sophistication uh, which had not been seen before in this country. Um, airports ultimately are uh, known focal points for gang-related activities such as uh, illicit drug trafficking, uh, and they provide um, pathways for transnational um, serious and organised crime groups to expand uh, their operations for domestic and international travel. Um, Australia's busiest airport, Sydney International Airport, handles as many as 44 million or handled as many as 44 million passengers in 2018, 16.7 uh, million of which were international travellers. And in my home airport of, uh, of Adelaide, uh, it, it handled 8 million uh, in the last financial year. Um, and although um, the uh, current arrangements provide a strong and comprehensive uh, system of aviation security, it's always essential that we remain uh, ahead of what is an always evolving threat. And the Police Powers Bill, as I'll describe it, will expand police powers at all major airports, and I'll come back to that, uh, by enabling police to either direct a person to produce the ev evidence of their identity, which we'll describe as an identity check direction direct a person to leave the airport premises or not take a flight, or direct a person to stop or do anything else necessary to facilitate an identity check. And for example, um, the proposed amendments would ultimately allow officers to check identification of a person where a known terrorism suspect, for example, drops off another unknown person at an airport, or for example, where a person is seen photographing screening and security points. Uh, now, of course, police would al always be required to exercise these new powers based on a very um, clear criteria in the legislation and relying, as always, uh, on their specialist expertise and training. Uh, and the new threshold which is provided by this bill um, is that the police are to exercise their powers to safeguard the public order and safe operation of a major airport, which is a broader, perhaps a broader uh, definition or, or a lower threshold than uh, the previous airport security definition. Um, this, uh, Madam uh, Acting Deputy President, doesn't, of course, mean that the intention of this bill is to um, check the identity of every person in the airport. Uh, the police presumably have no interest in doing that, nor will they have the resources to do so. Um, it's not the intention that these powers would ultimately act as a de facto requirement for people to carry identification. And the move-on direction is not um, a mechanism for punishment. Uh, rather, it's the intention that the move-on direction uh, would allow the police to provide what is basically a circuit breaker uh, to safeguard public order um, by, say, for example, preventing people from entering or boarding a flight. Um, and of course, as always, uh, it would be open for police to um, win in circumstances where they have enough information to reach uh, the uh, criminal uh, te uh, test threshold for arrest, that, that availability will be there as well. Um, so the Australian government is committed to ensuring these powers are genuinely exercised uh, in a non-biased and non-discriminatory uh, non matter, I should say, uh, and they are laws which are necessarily reasonable and proportional uh, to the threat. Uh, I should also say that these um, measures have been developed on advice from the Australian Federal Police. Uh, and that advice was, in essence, that the current identity checking powers uh, were no longer suitable, were no longer enough, uh, and uh, were no longer um, 
purpose built for the current national security environment. So the government is trying to essentially strike the right balance between security and, of course, minimising disruption to the travelling public. And of course, the numbers I've uh, detailed earlier on uh, do show that very large numbers of people do travel through our major airports. Um, I should say that, um, as always, um, people will uh, not, and, uh, and I notice uh, that Senator Patrick touched on this uh, before in the, the issue of children and their identity, but people will have a range of options when asked um, for uh, identification and they'll be able to satisfy a direction given by a, a police officer or a security professional uh, to provide identities in a range of ways. And that may well be producing something as simple as a passport or a driver's licence, which of course one would assume a passport would be very likely to be on a person in an airport, uh, providing a student card or a Medicare card, or simply by giving the officer their name, date of birth and address. Now, in the case of uh, children, um, the police would be, it would be open for the police to simply contact another person, such as a parent or a guardian, uh, to obtain the name, date of birth and confirm their identity. But what this does do is it provides the police in circumstances where a person does not have proof of identity um, but appears to have a genuine reason for being at the airport, um, the police may simply accompany that person uh, without trying to delay them. Uh, however, the refusal to provide ID, coupled with having met that threshold and uh, behaviours of the person may elevate police concerns uh, and uh, threats to public order and, uh, of course, uh, they could be used and that is the intention uh, of what is being proposed here. Um, Obviously, it goes without saying that the Australian Federal Police have a high level of training uh, and uh, uh, their officers at airports will regularly undertake specialist training, including behaviour analysis, um, and the AFP will regularly review and update their programs uh, in the environment to ensure that the current legislative powers uh, continue to maintain uh, their, their uh, sufficiency. Um, I think it's, it's, uh, in, in, it's, it's instructive uh, in certain circumstances to uh, think of these um, uh, well, the bill in its current form as a, uh, in the form of a case study. Uh, and uh, you can well imagine a situation where, in response uh, to a heightened threat environment, uh, increased police are assigned to patrol and observe security screening areas, which of course are a, a significant uh, point in an airport. Um, police may well in this circumstance, observe a person taking photos or videos at the screening point uh, during and passing through security. Now, in that circumstance, the police may well uh, look to CCTV footage, uh, and in circumstances where, for example, the police identify that that person has been at the airport for a long, lengthy periods of time, perhaps potentially even for hours, taking photos, making notes, uh, police may well consider this conduct highly unusual uh, in contrast to the sorts of uh, normal and everyday observations that you would see at an airport. Now, under our existing laws, the person's behaviour would probably not, in the circumstances, be sufficient for the officers to reach the threshold for identity checking powers. Um, but in, in the currently described circumstances, a still image of the person could be circulated amongst the officers, and if they were approached and they still weren't prepared to provide their name, uh, date of birth, uh, and so forth, the police could issue a direction to that person to provide identification. Uh, under the grounds that it was reasonably, safe, uh, reasonably necessary to safeguard aviation security. Uh, and if in the circumstances where the person refused to comply, uh, coupled with that suspicious behaviour, um, the police could issue a move on notice or direction for 12 hours, providing them, of course, with sufficient time to conduct checks uh, and intelligence holdings uh, and, uh, and to assess the threat. And it may well provide the critical circuit breaker, which uh, is critical to ensuring that our airports remain safe. Um, the government would um, uh, take it upon itself to make sure that the new powers were, um, uh, were advertised and new powers would be made available on the Department of Home Affairs website prior to coming into effect. Um, but of course they would only apply to uh, major Australian airports such as capital cities, uh, including also, though in addition to those, the Gold Coast, Launceston, Alice Springs and uh, Townsville. And uh, those airports have been, once again, as the legislation has been, or the bill has been framed, uh, selected on the basis of um, advice from the federal police. And they've been identified because of the large volume of passengers which, which trickle through those, uh, those transit 
airports. Um, so um, the uh, <clears throat> the bill is, as I would see it, further evidence uh, of the government's ongoing commitment to keep the travelling uh, public safe, to keep our airports safe, and ultimately to provide our police with the necessary tools they require uh, to do their job uh, effectively. And it will provide our law enf enforcement agencies with those tools uh, to protect Australia's airports and its citizens from serious criminal and security threats. And uh, I, uh, I commend this bill to the Senate. Thank you, Senator Ant.